So I'm in central London. Central London, coming up to Piccadilly Circus, because we're going to take a walk from this wonderful book by Andrew Duncan called Secret London. I did a walk around uh, the Notting Hill, uh, I could say Notting Hill Spur, I think it was called the Camden Hill Spur, and it was a really great walk. I did that last summer from this book. It's an intriguing book, and it was recommended to me because someone asked me if I'd done the Islington Spur walk, and I thought, I know Islington pretty well. Very well, in fact, probably better than anywhere else in London, I think. And um, I was intrigued by that idea. When I looked at Andrew Duncan's walk, I thought, that's an interesting way of looking at the landscape of Islington. And it's an intriguing way of looking at the landscape of London. And the walk I'm going to do today is around St. James's, the occluded secret passages and alleyways and courts and palaces, the palace of St. James's. And we start off by heading down Piccadilly. Probably my first video of the year was a rainy walk through Mayfair. Also shot on an action camera, you'll notice I'm shooting here with the Insta360, although I probably won't use the 360 mode much. And that walk through Mayfair ended, oh my lord, it's very noisy, that walk ended here at Piccadilly. So now we're walking on the other side of Piccadilly to the left. That walk was over there to the right. And I'm really chuffed to say that this video <laughs> is sponsored by HelloFresh which is fantastic. Um, and for, hey, if, you do, if you don't know what HelloFresh is, HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service, really delicious fresh meals with menu cards delivered straight to your door. And actually, because of the sponsorship, I've been trying out HelloFresh. So I'll tell you more about it later. Not just tell you about it, I'll show you later. <laughs> and I'll show you some of the food I've cooked, which has been sensational. Let's just say I've got a very happy family at home. <laughs> So that's, well, and there's an offer code, JR Walk. But all of that will be dealt with later, and there's a link in the description below where you can get your discount. So we pass through this quite majestic iron uh, gateway into St. James's Church. This is a Wren church. You've got to love a bit of Wren. And we, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the church. This is the way to get to German Street, or a way to get to German Street. Um, somewhere I've never really been before is down through there, through the garden, which looks like a delightful little spot. Because it's busy, it's really busy here. Look, you can see, isn't it strange that you basically just pass through the church like this? through the church and then we come out on the other side in German Street which is interesting isn't it German Street being the home of shirt making that isn't in Andrew Duncan's book but I think a lot of people know that already don't they look at that beautiful shop over there Harvey and Hudson and we are going to turn right along German Street so this is the first of two arcades that we're going to pass, Prince's Arcade. I think Prince's Arcade is not one of the older ones. We, we talked about this when I did the Mayfair walk. We've got um, Piccadilly Arcade up here, which is an old Victorian arcade, I believe. Got all the kind of high-end shops down here, very shishi. Tramp. Is that a tramp? That's mem it says, see, St. James's is known as um, for its clubs, the gentlemen's clubs. The old topographical books call it Clubland. And I think Tramp was like a real 80s kind of place, wasn't it? For the, uh, I don't know, the jet set, as they would have been called. And outside the Piccadilly Arcade, we have this statue here of Beau Brummel who uh, lived from 1778 to 1814. He was like a, just a, a famous dandy, really, who was associated with Clubland, because the, the, what they call the gentlemen's clubs around here, although I'm not sure how gentlemanly they were, go back quite some time. And here we have Piccadilly Arcade, which is really magnificent at Christmas when it's all lit up. So we're going to cross St. James's Street and go into Bennett Street over there. turning into Bennett Street. I'll be honest with you, 
I've not really explored St. James's much in the past. I passed through here, but all of this is new to me. I've known about the history of club land. Obviously you've got St. James's Palace, which I think we pass, well I can see it in the end of the street there, but we're gonna go around in a loop. And to my shame, this is an area I've barely scratched the surface of. The Blue Post pub here is a landmark on this walk. The Blue Post, it was like a modern pub, doesn't it? The Ryder Cup golf on, and actually, I don't think that building there is actually on the walk. There's so many notable buildings, that one doesn't make the cut. So at the left, you turn left anyway, at the end of Bennett Street. Uh, this very much looks like a dead end. And yet again, an intriguing building at the end, but there is apparently a set of steps here, which takes us down the hill. Look at this. Yeah, look, set of steps. Go down these steps. Who knew? And just at the end of the stairs that you have down there, Overseas House, which is the home of the Royal Overseas League, which was formed at the beginning of the 20th century to sort of uh, promote international comradeship, but under the kind of agencies of the, uh, of the British Empire, so with a particular slant to it. But, yeah, it occupies two grand houses, Vernon House and Rutland House. So we're going to turn left along Park Place and then right into St James's Street. And along the way, we're going to pass a couple more of the uh, famous old clubs. There's Pratt's Club somewhere <laughs> and Brooks Club. I think this is Brooks Club on the left. So we go to St James's through the, this archway, easy to miss, into Blue Ball Yard. Blue Ball Yard. What it's going to be in Blue Ball Yard? Well, I know because I've got the guide for it. <laughs> but, uh... Wow, this is both amazing and humbling. I had no idea about any of this. Look at this sort of, it's a little muse with these cottages here with balconies above. This, is, I think, is a hotel now. And this was originally, I think this was Coachman's Quarters, built in 1741. It looks like it was just like a pub there, people just having a drink. And according to Andrew Duncan's guidebook, written in the 1990s, the old wine cellar, the old brick vault, is now a, is now a, um, a dining room. So I have my first HelloFresh box and I can't, I can't tell you I was unnaturally excited about receiving this today not as excited as my family were though because uh, they were over the moon that I was doing this partnership with HelloFresh um, so anyway let's let's have a look one of the great um, benefits of this it's all beautifully packaged by the way it's all very sort of sustainable and and it's look, like so easy to order I do like uh, I do the weekly shop don't mind admitting, and this was an absolute doddle. Um, and the, one of the reasons that they were so excited is a like the, the, the recipes are really, really quick. They're really, really quick. Actually, after doing this segment here, I'm going to go and cook the Thai, the Thai green style chicken curry, which looks amazing. And it's like 15 minutes to cook that. Hayley's behind the camera. She looks overjoyed at that because normally I do take a little bit too long in the kitchen normally. And because this is like a lot of the preps are already done for you, it's all portioned out. Like this is number seven. And here's a bag here with the ingredients for number seven in it. Well, the dry ingredients anyway, and the sauces and all that kind of stuff, which is all portioned out. So there's no waste. Uh, that's one of the things that bothers me actually with like shopping for a family is you often get like, well, it's difficult to calculate how much you're going to need, but they've already done that work for you, which is really exciting. So you've got all your, your bits and bags, the numbers, the numbers match the recipe cards. This is all nice, kind of like autumny, wintery, sort of stewy, hearty, lovely foods. This is kind of quick, convenient, tasty, wholesome, healthy, all the good stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this. 
So click the link in the description box and use my exclusive code JRWALK to get 60% off your first box and then 25% off the next two months. What a great offer, I know I'll be using it. <laughs> the family loved it. I, we're, there's lots of things I really loved about it. The food was delicious. Last night I cooked the, um, the sweet potato and chicken and garlic um, casserole, stew casserole thing, and that was incredible. Like I say, the family absolutely loved it as well. So yeah, like I say, discount code below, JR Walk exclusively, great discount, and thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And now you've got to see me doing a little bit of cooking as well, and, you know, or a little bit of the food I've cooked. And one of the things I love about walking around London is I just came down this street here to find somewhere quiet to film but look i saw the blue plaque from this house in 1848 frederick chopin went to guildhall to give his last public performance isn't that amazing what's interesting about st james's place you've got lots of people kind of cruising around here we want to turn left by the red pillar box is the landmark we're going to turn left down here to where it was once well duke's hotel actually it looks like it still is duke's hotel and Duke's Hotel was originally established as a hotel for wealthy bachelors, so Andrew Duncan tells us. This is one of those streets that almost every building has a plaque on it. <laughs> this one here, number 29, St. James, this is a Winston Churchill lived here. Of course, we must remember that Winston Churchill came from a very, very wealthy family. He wasn't exactly a man of the people. And then next to it, we have a house associated with William Huskisson, 1770 to 1830. A statesman, he lived here. I had no idea who that is. And I think next to it is Spencer House. And I think this must be Spencer House, which was the townhouse of the uh, Princess Diana's family, the Spencer family, who made lots and lots of money from sheep farming back in, I don't know, 16th, 17th, 18th century. And this was their townhouse. When Andrew Duncan was writing in the 90s, this was leased to the uh, Lord Rothschild. Uh, I think he used it for, as offices. And the downstairs was open, I think. I would say now it looks like it may have become some sort of dining club, hotel type thing. So basically we've reached the end of the street and we're, so we're going to turn right up here past that hotel with the flags on it and then left down some more stairs. How exciting. That's the Stafford Hotel and I think the, the muse we were in earlier on in Blue Ball Yard, that's the back of the Stafford Hotel. And the stairs we're looking for are here somewhere I believe. I think if we just keep walking up. Well, the passage, well, here we go. I do love a good passageway. <laughs> Isn't this great? And I believe it brings us out into Green Park. So here we are in Green Park, which is a really delightful little park, which of course has the River Tyburn running through it. So the, the dip here, the undulation, the shape of the land is formed by essentially the Tyburn, the course of the Tyburn beneath the ground. And when doing this walk, one shouldn't forget just to take time to sit under a tree in, in uh, the wonderful Green Park <laughs> and just watch the world go past because this is one of London's great parks. We are going to crack on any minute though. So the rather fancy pile behind this undergrowth here, Bridgewater House, is the next landmark on our walk. We're looking for a passageway to its left. So here we go, look, it looks like a gated path that you can't go through, but you can. You come through here and we're going to go into Cleveland Row. And I think... Uh, yeah, these buildings here are notable. On the left, this one here, Bridgewater House. It's from the family that built the Bridgewater Canal or owned the Bridgewater Canal and all the wealth that accrued. And on the right, we have Selwyn uh, House. And Selwyn House 
when um, that was named after the family who lived here, but when Andrew Duncan was writing his book, it was the home of Pilkington's Glass, which is interesting. And this is an enormous part. I mean, anywhere else that would be a palace, wouldn't it? Let's be honest, rather than a house. It's incredible. Again, in the 1990s, when Andrew Duncan was writing his book, it was the home of a, of a wealthy Greek shipping magnet and also offices. I don't know what it is today. And that is Cleveland Row down there. I mean, this is a ridiculously grand part of town. And you'll see why straight ahead. Think of the name St. James's. Where have you heard that before? St. James's. So basically, we emerge into the street. We're down the end there. We will go that way. You see St. James's Palace. And then down here, I believe, is Clarence House, which formerly the home of the Queen Mother has been the home of King Charles and uh, Queen Camilla. I'm not sure if they're living there now, but they may, well, I don't see why not. And here we have the grand old St. James's Palace, significantly older than Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace is a real Johnny come lately. This is, uh, well, it's, it's considered to be the most senior royal palace in London for some reason. Enormously significant and it often gets overlooked. It's a working part of the palace. There's still royal offices here. St. James's Palace was built at the behest of Henry VIII, a man fond of a palace or two, and a odd wife as well. And for a period of time, it was the principal royal palace. Um, the, I think the Tudors and the Stuarts preferred the Palace of Whitehall, but then after that, this was the main area of business until Queen Victoria made Buckingham Palace the official residence. But most significantly, you will have seen it in the news about a year ago, because this is one of the functions of uh, St. James's Palace, or one of the offices here that has a function, is the Council of Ascension, which proclaims the new monarch. And it was from St. James's Palace, there's a man cycling around there playing really loud music out over the back of a rickshaw. I mean, I suppose why not, but it's a bit loud. And it was from St. James's Palace that King Charles III was proclaimed king, which is interesting because then he used to live just over there. Imagine that happening outside your front door. So this is an incredibly important place and there are some, some members of the royal family still living at St. James's Palace. And of course, well, you may be thinking St. James's, St. James's, haven't I heard that before? It's because the Royal Court is officially the Royal Court of St. James's. The, the Court of St. James's is the, is the official Royal Court of the Monarchs of the United Kingdom. Amazing. So down there is Pall Mall. That is most associated with Clubland. But we're going to turn up here, back up St. James's again. And I think one of our locations it's just on the other side of the zebra crossing. I think we have a little bit of subterranean London up here. So here we have the very famous Berry Brothers wine merchants who have been in business since the 18th century. They also produce Cutty Sark whiskey apparently and their vaults stretch beneath the granite. They're vast wine vaults and we will see the extent of those soon. We'll get a, an idea of the extent of them. Because if you just go to the right, just go up here, we have Pickering Place. Look, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? It prevents the wood panel. This is it's wood paneling here. It's wood paneling. A little passageway. And it's going to bring us out to a courtyard. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Isn't this wonderful? Duncan says this is the prettiest little courtyard in St. James's, and isn't it delightful? And the Berry Brothers wine vaults stretch all the way from the shop there, all the way apparently beneath the street and beneath these houses here. Isn't that amazing? It says to the Pickering Cellar, I guess there must be the entrance to the wine cellars. You'd never know this was here, would you? I had no idea. We're going to go back along the passageway here, back on St. James's. <laughs> and this 
This is Lock and Co, a famous hatters founded in 1676. So we're going to turn off St James's into King Street and then from here we are looking for another little narrow lane. There we go, just off of King Street, look we've got Crown Passage here. Go down here, it's the buzz of air conditioning which I imagine would be quite loud. Davies, 1870, whatever Davies is. A little alleyway down there. And Duncan uh, thinks maybe Crown Passage takes its name from a lost pub. So many little courts and passages. I mean, it is redolent of the City of London. You get a lot of this in the City of London, but this is in a relatively small space. And we're going to go to the end and then along Pall Mall. The Red Lion Pub. You can imagine everyone standing out here after work, having a drink in the evening, past the red line, back out through the passageway. On to Pall Mall, you can see St James's Palace up there. So we've just gone round in a little bit of a loop. Uh, on to Pall Mall. And then we turn left, not, lot, not far after Crown Passage, into Angel Court. I don't know what's down Angel Court. I don't think from Andrew Duncan's book anything is here. I think this was redeveloped in the 90s. But we'll go along here, back onto King Street. Through here, past the theatre bar on the first floor. I didn't know there was a theatre bar here. What pub is this? Interesting, this is the Golden Lion. It's a new one on me. That's the Golden Lion pub there. I'll have to look up the theatre bar there. Um, so now we're going back along King Street. I nearly missed Christie's auction house on the far side there. I feel like I've walked past Christie's before in a video, but maybe I'm wrong because we're not on the course of the Tyburn here, so I don't know where I would have passed that. It's probably more than one Christie's, isn't there? But this, that's not the direction we're going. We're going this way towards the London Library. Heritage plaque here saying that the Liberal Party was founded on this site on the 6th of June, 1859. There you go. So we turn off King Street to the left, up Duke Street, St James's. And up here is another little yard, but with a very prominent, interesting building in it. So, so I did consciously film this video on a Sunday because um, I thought it, I wanted it to be quiet, really. You know, the West End can get quite busy at the weekend, and it's particularly busy during the week. So I thought Saturday or Sunday is particularly good, but it's much quieter than I thought it would be. Particularly St James's. Palace, you think that would be a major tourist attraction? Nobody there. One other person was looking at it. How strange. Right. Our next turning is here, our next passageway. So between numbers 12 and 13, it's only got some bollards. We turn into this little courtyard here. Easy to miss. Some modern buildings, also look like some antique silver shop there. And what we're looking for is the London Library. This is a gallery, I think this is White Cube. Christian Markley show on there. Yeah, some sort of high-end art galleries. Of course, where you get money, you find art galleries, because who's gonna buy the art? I think the attraction in here is that this is the back wall of the London Library, <laughs> which is an interesting sort of landmark to have, isn't it? But uh, the London Library is interesting because it's a members, a private members, and you have to pay a subscription to be a member. But I think you can take out an unlimited number of books or something like that. I remember meeting someone 
who used to always come to the National Film Theatre with piles of books, and that's because he was a member here. Uh, so this is the battle well, established in 1845 on that site. I think the entrance is in St James's Square. That's quite interesting. So in the corner, this is an interesting building. Here, right in the corner, number nine, modern building, and beside that is a passageway which you can walk along. I imagine it's pretty gnarly on a Saturday morning. You can keep going around here, around, 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 and it brings us out into this other little yard here, which I imagine Andrew Duncan tells us the name. What is he saying? And this is Ormond Yard, apparently. I think there is a barber shop down here. Beloved of business type. There you go, look. Briggs's Gentleman's Hairdressers. Um, this was a favourite place, apparently, of sort of uh, well to do businessmen to get their hair trimmed. Isn't that amazing? Look at it. I wonder if it's still in business. So we're turning left into Duke of York Street here. Out of the other side of the yard, past the Red Line pub. And look, there's the back of the church there, we're sort of back on German Street, the back of St James's Church. So we've gone in the big loop. We're going to turn right into German Street. And we're looking for another little curious street. So we turn into Babamay Street, which apparently is a corruption something else. I'm not sure if there's actually anything down it, but there is the rear entrance to a, a mansion. This is an interesting little pub here, the Three Crowns. This has kind of been a pub tour, isn't it? You could do a wicked pub crawl around here. That actually, it's quite busy. So it's the, that is the rear of a mansion that has something like 77 rooms in it. Um, I think that is probably the most distinguishing feature. Again, I think the front of it is on St James's Square. So we're just going to retrace our steps now and go back to German Street. So we close the loop of our walk by going up here, up Eagle Place, back up to Piccadilly Circus. Well, that is the end of the walk. What a great little walk that was. I really, really enjoyed that. Sometimes it's really entertaining for me to follow a walk as mapped out in a book, particularly one where it's about 30 years old. So it's curious to see what's changed. And of course, you don't expect much to have changed around here. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And remember, you can get 60% off your first box with HelloFresh by clicking my uh, link below and using my exclusive code JRWALK. And you also get 25% off the next two months. That's fantastic code JRWALK, link in the description below, or you can just scan the QR code, which is on the screen here somewhere. I'll put it on here and you can just scan that with your phone. It'll take you straight to it. So it's a really wonderful partnership and I'll be getting more of their delicious food. <laughs> so as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing the next walk wherever that may be. And by then, by then, my, my book will be published and out in the world. So I'll have links to it and all that kind of thing. Exciting. <laughs>